I started taking these carburetors apart and I wanted to break this fuel line loose and gave it a little push. These fuel lines are quite crispy. This is the choke side mechanism. And the non choke side. This is the non choke side. And the choke side. This one is possibly missing the equivalent of that little spacer. Maybe it doesn't require it. I'll have to look on the parts list. These carburetors are now stripped. I was almost looking forward to dunking these things in my ultrasonic cleaner because I rarely use it. But these things are really quite undirty. <laughs> There's a little bit of sediment in the bottom of the bowl. It's very little. These brass parts and floats are quite clean. Look at this stuff. Crack. I'm going to have to glue this back together to reuse the original gas lines. There we go. This carburetor project has turned into a project. I want to replace these needles with DinoJet needles. I had this sitting in my parts bins out there, but unfortunately these are stock RZ350 jets, jet needles. Uh, so the dyno jet ones have been removed and who the heck knows where they went. I was hoping going through my stash of extra carburetors I have lying around, I could take some apart and find those missing dyno jet needles. But this is a really nice set here of stock carburetors and they are stock as can be. I have this other really hacked up junky set. There's part of it. There's the other part. These happen to have original Canadian needle jets. So the stock RZ ones are this and the Canadian ones are this. They're a tiny bit different in length. This Canadian one has some clip positions, but I think I'm just going to reassemble this junky set and put them away. I also have these individual VM26's but uh, some time ago I took these apart. These have the same stock Canadian needle in them. So I just ordered another one of these kits from Economy Cycle. I haven't decided what to do with these guys yet. If I should buy a whole new uh, float valve assemblies or just get some new O-rings. I can't remember if I mentioned. I'm going to start with 380 main jets, and I switched up from 25 to 22.5 pilot jets. Good to go, right? Not yet. I need to reassemble these. I ordered some new float valves from Yombits and a bunch of other stuff from there today. And the dyno jet needles are coming from Economy Cycle. Remember, your choke side carburetor, this one, has this extra circuit in it. Goes through here, there's an extra little hole right down there. The non-choke carburetor does not have that circuit in it. You can see this has an extra little tube in it too. This is the choke side, this is the non-choke side. It does not have that tube. These carburetors will not work properly if you mix these bowls. Put that one on that carburetor and that one on that carburetor. Don't do that. I put the carburetors on here so I could finalize some stuff there on there temporarily because I was waiting for the DinoJet kit to come in. So I got these drain lines on, vent hoses. I don't know what I'm going to do with this vacuum line or whatever line it is that went over here to the little smog canister. Uh, oil lines are hooked up down here. So now I'll take that tank back off, take the carburetors off, so 
is an expensive little buy here. I just wanted these guys. I don't think you can buy them separate. I think I already took a picture of these same instructions from 1989. But this will improve drivability, boost throttle response, and increase horsepower for my racing vehicle. I'm second guessing using these stock carburetors. I need to put those Dynojet needles in here and this is a project. These things suck. The instructions say remove the white plastic spacer from below the E-clip. Okay, there's the white plastic spacer. It's on a spring. Do I leave the spring or do I remove the spring also? I don't know. I left the spring. I think it needs to be in there. One down, one to go. Two Dynojet needles installed. I took the non-choke carburetor back apart because when I did this and opened it up, the needle was lifted a little bit. It wasn't all the way down like this one is. There's a lot I don't get here. Uh, I don't know why we're getting rid of this little plastic spacer right here. The Dynojet instructions say to get rid of it. Here's the stock needle. It would sit like this and just seat right on that plastic spacer. Here's the dyno jet needle. It does the same thing. Maybe someone can explain to me why we're getting rid of this white spacer. I'm trying to get these carburetors synchronized, these slides. Uh, this slide on this carburetor is down a little bit lower than this slide. In the manual, they talk about carburetor synchronization, but they don't talk about this screw right here, unless I'm missing something. This giant screw is the idle screw. Just flip these carburetors over. Let's see if I can work from this side. I'm using this drill bit as a gauge. I can barely get it in on this side. This one is loose. I'm not sure which way to turn this. I'll just go counterclockwise, about a quarter turn. I think it made the gap bigger on this side. So I'm going to try more like a half a turn clockwise. I kept turning this thing back and forth and uh, it definitely changes the slide adjustment and I think I just about have it here. They seem very equal. Actually this one maybe is a little looser. Now I flip the carburetors over and I'm going to turn the idle adjustment screw until I can just see a gap on one side or the other and make sure they're even. Yeah, flipping these things over seems to indicate that working from the other side is not the best plan. This one's open a bit, and that one's just barely starting to open, so I'll make the adjustment working from this side. Alright, I've been tweaking about on these screws here, and I think I have these things even. This tie wrap is sliding in snug here, and about the same this one. I don't remember if I mentioned this before. I don't understand this either. The Dino Jet fact, excuse me, the Dino Jet kit fact sheet says always remove float bowl vent tubes, especially on California models. Why? What difference would it make? If we have a vent tube here venting over there versus venting up here, I don't get it. Here's another reason these carburetors suck. Uh, I hooked my tack cable up. I can't get the carburetors on without disconnecting the tack cable. So I'm not 100% sure where it's supposed to route. I'm pretty sure it goes over this balancing pipe, but when it gets to here, uh, I guess I'll find out after I disconnect that cable and put the carburetors in. Where does it route? Through here? Through here? I don't think it can go over the top. I had the tack cable going under that black flexible balancer pipe. 
but there was too much angle over here to get it connected so it's now going over the balancer pipe and coming through here which kind of puts it right in the way of the fuel line carburetors are tightened up oil supply lines to the carburetors are on I kept vent pipes on here suppose I can try to take them off and see if it makes any difference and these drain pipes drain lines are on both carburetors oil supply to the carburetor I got the carburetors installed all nice and tidy looks good huh fuel lines and everything guess what I completely forgot my Yombits order is hung up in Memphis Tennessee in customs and I need to put new float valves in there, so the carburetors need to come back off. It's good practice, isn't it? I'm not going to do a follow-up video on that. These, this stuff will come back off and go right back on if and when I get my Yombits order. These instructions said remove the white plastic spacer from below the E-clip. Well, I removed a white plastic spacer, but it was above the E-clip. So I took the time to read these instructions. It says, for this model, the dyno jet needles are installed, leaving out the plastic spacer that was found beneath the E-clip. They don't say the white spacer. This is Toomey's website with instructions on installing their pipe kit, which includes needles. Installing the jet kit. This is very clear. It says, you will notice there is a white plastic spacer with a spring. That's the white plastic spacer I took out. Then the needle with its circlip. And then a black plastic spacer. Take out the black spacer and the needle. You will not be needing these now. So, off with the carburetors again. And I haven't even begun jetting on this thing. Hopefully I get it right this time. So this spacer is coming off. We're not going to use this spacer. I don't think this thing would have ran at all the way I had it set up. I'm putting the white spacer back on there. I think. There we go. This piece is reassembled. Back into the carburetor it goes. And I'm going to take those 380 main jets out and put the 420 main jets in. The 420 is the sea level setting up through 2,500 feet. Again, this is uh, Toomey's website, but the dyno jet instructions also say to use these 420s. So I'm going to go with the 420s at least to start. Deja vu, it's all back together again with 420 main jets and hopefully the needles are assembled properly. They're in the middle position without the black spacer. Black spacer. Black spacer.